Sorafenib does have some toxicities that we're very familiar with. Uh, most commonly, it can cause a hand-foot skin reaction, uh, as well as GI problems. Uh, most concerning would be diarrhea of various uh, severity. And also, because it hits the VEGF axis, we can see hypertension, especially in a patient who has pre-existing hypertension. So this patient has advanced liver cancer, and we had discussed that the treatment options are really going to be serafinib or consideration for a clinical research study. Uh, this patient has a history of some noncompliance uh, with her medications, and therefore is not felt to be a good candidate for a clinical study, and is started on standard of care, serafinib 400 milligrams twice a day orally. When starting patients on serafinib, uh, even though it's an oral drug, it is still an anti-cancer drug, and we need to watch our patients closely uh, in order to mitigate side effects. I think it's important that patients be seen you know, within two weeks of starting their medication. Uh, that allows us to intervene early uh, for side effects. Uh, it's also good to counsel patients beforehand uh, to prepare for GI toxicity. They should have Imodium on hand or for skin toxicity, uh, advising them to uh, avoid repetitive trauma to their hands and feet, wear comfortable shoes, and often uh, emollients and urea-based creams can be helpful, such as Utterly Smooth is one of the, the ones we commonly use. So this patient comes back for follow-up, uh, and at this time her blood pressure is a little higher than at baseline. Uh, she is fatigued and reports having several loose stools a day. So at this point, uh, if we consider this grade 3 diarrhea, uh, and that is diarrhea that is frequent, interfering with her ADLs, uh, her activities of daily living, uh, she needs some intervention. I think it's very reasonable to hold her drug for a short period of time, uh, start her on Imodium uh, if she was not being compliant with that and have her come back within a few days to make sure she is doing better or at least be in touch with her over the phone. Once things have cooled down, the question will become, do we resume the same dose or dose reduce her? I think in a first episode that is uncomplicated, uh, meaning she doesn't require an admission or IV fluids, uh, then it is not unreasonable to try her back at the full dose and advise her to be proactive with uh, anti-diarrheal agents. Uh, if, uh, if she is not felt to be able to be compliant with that or she does start back on her full dose and has a recurrent episode of significant diarrhea despite Imodium, then I think at that point we need a dose reduction. So in the setting of this patient, the patient does go back on 400 milligrams twice a day with uh, education on how to manage their Imodium, to take it daily, uh, and frequently as needed for her loose stool. But despite that, she has a, another episode of severe frequent diarrhea, and therefore she is dose reduced. At 400 milligrams once a day, uh, she's doing better. Uh, typically, in managing patients on serafinib, we image them on a regular basis, uh, probably somewhere in the range of two to three months, like many other malignancies. As we know, serafinib does not typically cause tumor shrinkage or uh, resist type of response, but often has been shown to have disease stabilization. Sometimes we see a decrease in enhancement of the tumor. Uh, but this is a cytostatic drug that has been shown to improve progression-free survival and overall survival without shrinking tumors.